everyone I'm Mama J so in today's video I would like to show you how I made these adorable lanyards these would be great to sell during craft fairs vendor events or uh, to pass along to teachers my daughter is a third grade teacher and my goal was to come up with something that was not only functional but cute and colorful that she could use as a lanyard so I'm going to be showing you a quick demo of the two different types of straps that I have here. And that would be this one with the flowers. This is the same base strap, but we've added flowers on this one. So we'll show this example. And then these others have a different style of strap here. This one I've just braided. So I'm not going to demonstrate that. It's just a traditional three strand braid but the feeding in the beads and sewing on the lanyard strap that will all be the same and we'll demonstrate that after we get through the demo of making the straps all right so i want to show you a few things that i've used to make these and i will make sure to link them all down in the description below if you're interested so these are just your basic lanyard clips and they come with key rings um, a lot of times the teachers do like to have their door key attached to their badge lanyard. So providing both of those is a good idea if this is something that you're going to end up selling. So these are a few of the silicone beads that I've been using. I've got the teacher theme and then these are just all cow themes. It just makes it kind of cute. And then these are just your regular run-of-the-mill colored silicone beads. And then I just blend these in with whatever cow or teacher. And if I don't want to use one of those, then I can either use the flowers here or if we're going to do a bumblebee theme, something like that. If you don't want to use silicone because they are a little heavier, then you can just use regular wooden beads. Just make sure whatever bead you use that the hole is big enough that you're able to feed your tapestry needle with your yarn through. Uh, something like this, you can either use raw or you can paint the beads to match whatever color that you're looking for. All right, so the yarn that I'm going to be using today is this Yarn Bee Fundamental Cotton. This is 100% mercerized cotton. It calls for a four millimeter crochet hook, but I will be using a three and a half today because I, I'm trying to get the smaller fabric because you don't want a thick bulky strap. So I will be downsizing a needle or a hook size for this. Uh, this is the one that I used to braid. And this is, uh, I got this at Hobby Lobby. I got the other one at Hobby Lobby too, but this is the I Love Cotton brand. And the last yarn sample that I have, I got this on Amazon and very odd. I don't know if we can scan that QR code to get the information, but there is no hook size or anything on this. It's super, super soft. All right, so the other things we're gonna be using today, we're gonna need a pair of scissors. I've got my three and a half millimeter crochet hook, and then just a, a little miniature pair of pliers, and then we'll need our tapestry needle. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. For the demos today, I'm going to be using this yarn bee. All right, so we want to leave a nice long tail because what our goal is when you've got the two end pieces whatever your tail that is left over you're going to feed down through your beads you're going to attach it around your lanyard hook and you're going to feed it back up through so we need at least that much tail plus we need a little bit where we can connect these two pieces, the, the two ends of your strand. You wanna connect those so they're not so loose and create kind of like a little V right there where the beads begin. So I'm going to leave about that much as a tail to get started. All right, so the first one that we're going to do will be the one with the flowers. Um, the flowers I will do separately, but for the actual strand, that is simply you make a foundation chain as long as you want your lanyard and i make mine about 36 37 inches that gives them 
enough room for the key and the badge to hang without them having to lean over so much if their hands are full when they're entering the door. So we'll go over the strap and we'll go over the flowers. So make a foundation chain as long as you would like your lanyard strap. So we're going to start with a slip stitch and I'm just going to crochet maybe 10 just as my sample and then you can pause the video at that point to continue making your foundation chain the length that you want it. All right, so I have my 10. Now when I'm making a strand like this, I do like to work in that back bump of that chain. So you've got, if you turn it around the other way, you can see the V, but for something like this, we're gonna try to work in that back bump. You don't have to, that's just my preference. And we're going to do half double crochet. So we're gonna go into that second chain from the hook. So we're gonna look for that second bump and we're gonna just do a half double crochet. Okay, then we're gonna do that all the way across through the remaining chains of that foundation chain. So a half double crochet, you yarn over, you insert your hook into that chain, yarn over, draw up a loop, and then you yarn over and pull through all three. So we're just gonna do that all the way across. So I'm down to my last one here. So I'm just going to do that final half double crochet of my sample strand. And then we're just going to cut that off. And then fasten it off. So to fasten it off, we don't want to just pull the strand through that last stitch we made. We want to just do like another slip stitch, just kind of do a chain and pull it through that way. All right, so you're gonna have a full size strap and your tails will be used to fasten your two pieces together to make the loop of the lanyard. And then what's left of your tail will be used to attach those beads. And we'll get into that when we're done with the other strap sample. All right, so this is the strap that we just finished, which is the foundation row, the length that you want it. And then the half double crochet starting in the second chain in that back hump all the way across. And now we're going to work on these flowers. So you decide how many flowers you want. Um, I do suggest not putting them all the way around because you don't want those flowers to end up behind the neck. It will be uncomfortable for the person wearing the lanyard. So now let's get to work on the flowers. So you need to leave just a little bit of a tail. You don't want to have just a little nub because you will use this tail on the beginning and ending tail to attach the flowers to the actual strap. So. Just leave a, a maybe five, six inches on both ends. So we're going to start with a slip knot and we're going to chain three. Now we want to do a half double crochet in the first chain. So not the one next to the hook, but the first chain that we made. So we're going to come all the way back down to this first of the three. So we'll yarn over. We'll insert our hook and you don't have to use the back bump on this one if you don't want to, whichever one you can get it into. So yarn over, draw up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all three for that half double crochet. So that has made our little circle. Okay. And if you can maybe get a nail or something in there to help hold that open. So now we want to chain one and then we're going to single crochet inside that ring. So we're chaining one and then we're going to insert our hook into the ring and then we're going to do a single crochet. Now we're going to slip stitch in that single crochet 
when we join and close this. So if you want to use a stitch marker, feel free. Now we're going to get into our repeat and we're going to repeat this five times and I'll put it up on the screen for you, but we're going to chain two. Then we're going to do two double crochet together and I'll show that in detail. We'll chain two and then we'll do another single crochet. And again, we'll repeat that five times to make the flower. So we'll start with that chain two. Okay, and then two double crochet together. So we're going to yarn over. We're going to insert into that circle that we made. Yarn over, draw up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two. Then we're going to yarn over, insert our hook, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through the other three. And now we're going to chain two, and then we're going to single crochet into that to finish the first petal. You just want to try to tighten that up, make sure you're leaving enough room to do all five. All right, so we're going to repeat that same thing we just did. So we're going to chain two, and we're going to do two double crochet together. So that's yarn over, insert our hook into that circle, yarn over, pull through two, then we're going to yarn over, insert our hook again, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through the other three. Chain two, and then we're going to single crochet to close that second petal. So we've got two of the five. All right, so we're going to, again, repeat that until we get all five. So we'll chain two, going to yarn over, insert our hook, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, insert into that circle, draw up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over and pull through the remaining three. Chain two, and then single crochet into that circle. All right, so there's three of the five. So I'm just going to finish the other two, and I'm going to speed up the video. And then once I finish the other two, then I'll show you how we're going to join to close that flower off, okay? All right, so I've got that last single crochet, and now we need to just take that first single crochet and do a slip stitch to close this off. Now we can take out our stitch marker. All right, so there is our flower. So you just make as many of those as you want. We'll just trim this off and fasten this down. All right. There we go. So when you attach the flower to the strand, you're just going to set it right over top and just make sure that if you decide you want to have the strand in between two of the petals or if you want one petal even with the strand, just try to be consistent so it looks better. And then you just take these and you weave it in and out and just make sure you're going completely around that circle so it's nice and tight. And you can lay the strap out so you can pin the flowers and that way you've got them all sorted out and you know where you want them, you know what it's going to look like. So just lay that strap out, plan it out and attach those flowers and you've got that strap completed. All right, so moving on to the next strap. 
again we need to have that longer tail so we have enough room to attach the beginning and ending of your strand so you can close that strap and then you've got enough of the tail to weave in and out of those beads so that's about what I want to leave here so we're just going to start with a slip stitch and again let's just get our so this is the one that we're going to be working on now and it kind of looks like a chain it's got a nice border along the outside and then it's a thinner border on the inside okay we have our slip stitch and for this pattern it is just a chain two so we're going to chain one and two now we're going to yarn over and we're going to insert our hook into that first chain that we created so that's the second from the hook we're going to yarn over and insert our hook we're not making a ring we're just going to yarn over and draw up a loop now we have three strands now we want to do it again yarn over insert into that same chain yarn over draw up a loop and now we have five one two three four five and we're going to yarn over and pull through all five so now we've made a puff it's just a small puff so now we're going to chain two and see this hole here that we've made by that first chain we're going to be working in that okay so that's right above the puff there's that first chain and we're going to do another puff so we're going to yarn over insert our hook into that space we just made draw up a loop we have three yarn over go back into that same space draw up a loop now we have five and we're going to yarn over and pull through all five chain two now with that first chain we want to make sure we're leaving enough room that we can work our hook into there but you don't want to leave too much because if you do then the spacing in here is going to look stretched out and too big so you just try to find that happy medium so we've got that space here above the puff again okay we're going to yarn over insert into that space draw up a loop yarn over insert into the same space and draw up for five loops and then yarn over and pull through all five and that's the entire pattern for this chain so i'm going to do two more and then i'm just going to fasten this off because i want to spend some time with you attaching the beads so we've got our chain two and we're looking for that space for that first chain above the puff yarn over insert your hook yarn over draw up a loop yarn over insert your hook and draw up a loop and pull through all five yarn over pull through all five all right so let's do one more it's a chain two yarn over insert into that first chain space have three loops yarn over insert and pull up another loop for five and then yarn over and pull through all five all right so you continue that process and again i'll put the instructions up on the screen so you can pause at this point but just continue that until your strand your strap is the length that you want it to be and again i usually stop mine around 36 37 inches that's typically a great size and length for the lanyard so once you get to the end you're going to chain two and go ahead and cut it off and then just pull right through that second chain and just tighten it down and then that way you've got kind of like a an extra point on both your beginning and your end so when you take and you sew these two together you've got a secure spot to start with 
so that's why we need the extra tail to be able to attach these two right here. So that's what we're going to pick up next. So go ahead and pause the video, finish your strand, and then we'll get started on attaching these beads. All right, so let's work on the beads. And you can design this however you want. Uh, I try to match, of course, the strap strand color with whatever design I'm using. So with this one, I'm just going to use one of the little flowers in the middle, two black beads, and then two white beads. So I like to start up here. And as I mentioned before, you can see the, the thicker border on the outside of this pattern. So you want to make sure that is showing on the outside. And then just kind of work your way down, keeping it flat and then putting both of your end pieces together. And again, just making sure that you've got that thicker border on the outside. And I, I just like to use a stitch marker to kind of hold that together. All right, to get started, we're just going to feed one of our tails through our tapestry needle. And then we just want to kind of weave ourselves back and forth, back and forth. You want to try to get more than just a single strand because if you just get one and you start tugging on that, you're kind of you're going to stretch that fabric out and we don't want to do that. So just get two of them if you possibly can and just go back and forth until that is attached. And then once you get the one in there to hold it still, you can take that take that stitch marker out. And then just keep going back and forth until we've attached and we're only attaching this very first puff here. We don't want to go any farther than that. And again, just going back and forth till we have that nice and secure and just save enough of this tail that we're able to feed that through the beads. So that will be good. So those two are attached. So now we can just flip it over, flip it over just so we can come back down where that other tail is. You want to kind of be able to center the two so it looks centered above your beads. All right, so now we have that attached. And I want to take this one and actually move it over a little bit so that's more centered. All right, so I'm just going to maybe go a little sideways with him here and over one more space. All right, so we're back in the middle and you wanna just find a needle that's thick enough that you're gonna be able to weave both of your strands through. All right, so we've got those threaded. All right, so now here's our pattern. So we've got the white, the black, the flower, the black, the white. So we're just going to start with the white one because it will be at the top. And you just feed you just feed the needle through. And this is where I said you need to make sure that you've got holes that are big enough that your yarn and the needle are going to go through. And if you have a hard time pulling that needle through, that's what our little pliers are for. So you can use those if you need to. I usually don't need to use those until we're coming back up after all the beads have been put on. Now you don't want to put the beads too tight because this does need to be a little flexible. So you can see here I've got a little bit of space in between each one and that is foldable and flexible. So next is our black one. And 
and our flour. Our black one. Our white one. It's the last white one. All right, so there's our beads. All right, so now we're going to, let me zoom out just a little bit. Now we just want to bring the hook through the lanyard circle. And then we're just going to go back up through the beads. So you can go through two at a time and this is where having these little pliers will come in handy because that does get a little tight bringing that yarn back through again so just pull that all the way to where that lanyard thing is tight but is not too tight again you want those to be a little flexible so we're going to go up through that center bead. Now, we don't want to go beyond this because what I want to do is tie a knot right here, right above this flower bead. So we'll just tie a knot. You can pull it pretty tight and that's just going to help keep all of this from coming apart. So now we want to go back up through the neck, the black bead, try to get this back in there. And then we want to tie one more knot. And then you can just feed these last two back up through here separately because all we're going to do is cut them off right there at the top. So pull those nice and tight. Just make sure you've got enough movement that they're not super tight. You want to make sure that's nice and secure here at the bottom. And then we can just take and cut these off. And just kind of pull up on them. So you can get as close to that bead as possible. All right, so there is our lanyard. So that was pretty easy. And this strap is very, very simple to make. And if you choose to make this one, you don't even have to attach the flowers. You can just use the strap that is that half double crochet. You can see here that it looks just as nice without the flowers added to it. I hope this has inspired you to make some of your own lanyards. If you've got young children and you're looking for quick teacher gifts, I think this is something that would be 
uh, very nice to give to your teachers. If you do craft fairs or vendor events, you can make these in bulk and turn around and sell them if you sell your crochet items. And I hope it's inspired you to make some of your own. So thank you for watching and until next time, I hope you have a great day. Bye.